Well, it looks like everybody's here before I'm ready. Okay, well, oh, better hurry up then. Jim, Stuart, Gustavo, Jack, Jim again. Uh, Carl, Peter, Lodum. This is, uh, might have to take this to the dentist tomorrow. Probably not. But, uh, we'll see. I, um, <coughs> had some, about 25 years ago, I had wisdom teeth taken out, three of them, left one in, and, uh, about a week and a half ago, I sort of started getting an irritation on one of my gums where the wisdom tooth was, and then after the next day or two, this little shark tooth pops out, and it's just like a vestigial remnant of the tooth that was, some shell or some bone, left over from it. Uh, it took a, about a week before it eventually loosened up enough I was able to extract it and so uh, I managed to get the blasted little thing out. For such a small piece it was uh, really causing a lot of pain and even making all the nerves in my face go funny so it wasn't much chop. Uh, fixed up now but then hilariously I still got to go to the dentist tomorrow because uh, last night I'm brushing my teeth and one of my fillings just pops off. So I'd say my jaw is shrinking and it's causing all the tectonic plates of everything to move and pop and yeah, so I've got earthquakes in my mouth. Hey Margarita Doctor, Panov, Flatlander, oh, well congratulations on making the stream. There's Toast Tech. The guy on eBay wants $30 for a piece of metal with two holes, so I want to make a hand. What sort of piece of metal? Oh, hinge repair kits, right, mm, I have no idea. Uh, hey, Coppet News, and Raul, Raul, Peter. Okay, so what do we got? We've got a 1466 that suffered some unfortunate damage, but uh, hopefully we should be able to repair this one. I say hopefully, because hopefully I can. Um, it's not actually damage in the we don't know what's wrong situation, it's damage as in the power connector got broken off just through whatever happened. I think the battery fell and pulled it off. Um, but the trouble is then super glue was used to try and put the plastic assembly back on but then the super glue wicked across and caused damage over here as well. So we've actually got two connectors to clear up and somehow we've got some solder there. We have to get all this cleaned up and then we'll have to find out whether the SMC is still alive or whether it got taken out as well. I keep freezing? Yeah, you're right. You do. I'm not sure what's going on. I think it might be YouTube. What I'll do is I'll change the settings down to something quite a bit lower. And we're brutal. Now uh, I'm down to 4000k bit. This is gonna suck. I'll try recording at the same time. No. I think it's just going to be a case of YouTube's been a difficult child right now. There does appear to be a rendering lag. Try now. No. Yeah. Uh, Death Tom, that's brutal. It's stuck at 1500. That would be a very iffy stream. Alright, let's see how we go, 4000, there's no lagging or encoding issues, so, yeah, let's see how we go. So we'll just clean this up. 
Well, super glue is a bit tricky to deal with because you've got to be careful because as you heat that stuff up and it gets into it starts vaporizing it can liberate formaldehyde hey warren hey pedro and you really don't want to have formaldehyde you don't want to start breathe that stuff in it's worse for you than covid19 i got the wrong damn tip on my soldering iron Uh, Death Bomb, yeah, if you're streaming at um, 720, you're right, it wouldn't be too bad. This really isn't the most ideal tip for this job, but it'll do the trick. I should really be going the other way, actually. Needs a more leaded solder there. Andrew Hey Defon, congratulations on your eleven. Uh, once you get over ten it seems to get reasonably okay at picking up. Over a hundred would be even better. Okay, now I'm fighting against the super glue. I'm going to try and actually shave it off. It's not really the ideal method either. If we can cut the bulk of it off, that'd be good. Sometimes you get lucky and it just cleaves off in a nice clean piece, but it looks like they used good quality stuff and consequently it's not easily cleaving off. Typical. Uh, this is a 1466. Nothing special. I mean, yeah. All MacBooks are special. All MacBooks deserve love. Hey, Ferris 2072. Ferris 72, does that mean you're born in 1972? Man, I'm going to be hearing noises like that tomorrow at the dentist. And then I'm going to have to put up with the whole... Um, emotional blackmailing and stuff like that. But, well, Mr. Daniels, you wouldn't have to be down here so often if you took better care of your teeth. And they were like, nah, 
That's a nice looking MacBook you got there. It would be terrible if it happened to drop on the floor, wouldn't it? Now, Matthew, the reason why I'm trying not to do too much hot air on this is because of the formaldehyde that it releases. And not to mention the fact that I have a slight reaction to superglue in general. And so I'm really not wanting to take that chance right now. Otherwise I'll go into the dentist tomorrow and they'll look at me and go, it seems like you've got some respiratory distress there, Paul. Maybe you shouldn't be coming in to get your teeth fixed up. Maybe you should be going into quarantine. Yeah, no, I don't want that. Hey, John White. Been doing my head into trying to code an Arduino IDE. Spent six hours trying to send hex to a LoRa module. You can read it, but you can't write to it. Uh, well, I feel your pain. I finally sold my Dymo multiple label printers on a Linux cup system problem. But unfortunately, I still haven't solved the fact that the printer loves to reorient whatever I send it in the orientation that I do not want it, no matter what combination I try be a portrait landscape, rotated 90, page size changes, everything, and it just keeps on defying me. And so now I've got this uh, spool of labels, probably a good 150 labels now, all wasted, because for some reason the printer, the Dymo printer, just does not want to um, print in this way, uh, so exceptionally frustrating to say the least. Nice way to waste a whole bunch of ah, uh, what are you doing, Paul? You don't do it this way, you numbskull. Hey, Zero Cool, and the freeze is here. Wow, we got. Oh my gosh, Yindi Yamara is here. How's it going, Yindi Yamara? Where are you at the moment? You in one of the communities or are you in one of the cities? Um, it seems to rotate depending on... It just, yeah, on every print job, it picks what it's going to do in terms of rotation. So it's almost like the printer internally is making a judgment call and it gets it wrong almost every time and it's starting to really tick me off it works fine for my other labels but it does not like this particular label set that I've got and they're genuine Dymo labels so I can't blame that I'll work it out, it'll be something stupid but I kind of used up all of my energy just um, figuring out why you couldn't have multiples of the same printer in the first place originally and that turned out to be a funny bug in the cups system that's probably sat there for the last 15 20 years and no one's noticed flat bander yeah I don't think the rotations are happening through the cup system. I have a feeling they're happening in the printer itself. So I'm going to have to dig in, see if I can... I might have to temporarily connect the damn printer up to a Windows machine and see if it shows up any settings that indicate anything to me about that. I've almost got all this super glue off yeah that's looking pretty good now hey Nicholas Miller yeah well I solved the Linux problem with the cups problem which funnily enough isn't actually an Apple problem and that's not me 
taken it out on Apple. What there's, yeah. The open source people have got to take the blame on that one. Ah oh man, this is gonna, this is gonna be a pain because I've got this perfectly good keyboard connector next to this completely mangled backlight connector and my little sheet is just a little bit too far so I'm going to trim it and see two in hey Keith McDermott and Nicholas Miller that's interesting I've got a lot of people that are turning up who have never haven't caught a stream in a while I wonder what's going on has YouTube actually finally got the notifications running? Yeah, MacOS uses cups as well. But it is open source, so yeah, the onus is on us. Anyway, I've done my bit. I uploaded the I uploaded a PR for it. So now they have to sort out what they're going to do. The real trouble is going to be that it will cause a great deal of disruption because it actually finally correctly picks up the serial numbers on the printers. Did you do micro? Oh, my wife asked me if I did micro. Yes, I did. I told you I did. Yes, I did. Oh crap, yeah, she'll watch this video and go, well, that's some attitude you give me there, boy. Better put a love heart there. Yep, gave the love heart, that should save me. Streaming at the correct time, ha! Huh. Matthew, Paul, do you know of any video in regards to different APN versus BOM layouts of the board of the same model? Uh, no, but it's usually in the um, schematic from what I remember. You should be able to find the the variations on the schematic listed. But beyond that, no, I can't really help you. I just realized I can just solder these off because I already busted it out. But getting another one back on there is going to be fun. Yeah, normally I'm very graceful when it comes to removing these things, but not this time. <laughs> uh, Stockholm, thank goodness I work from home. Now, uh, finally today, received my Victor 82 volt mower and whippersnipper. I gotta say, I'm very happy with the mower. The whippersnipper, it's pretty good. I'm, I'm not complaining about it much. Um, it does feel a little... I don't know if cheap's the right word I would use. But I do wish they'd spent a little more on the plastic. Same with the mower, but the mower is predominantly a metal body item anyway. But yeah, the whippersnipper would be nice if they'd spent a little more on the panels, the plastic. The plastic feels like the sort that you leave it out in the sun around here for a year and it's going to be split and nasty. But in terms of the actual cutting performance, the electric mode performance and all that, it's really good. And the charge rate is quite nice too. Travis Stamper, a whippersnipper is a um, brush cutter or a weed whacker. Take your pick. Strimmer, that's another. Uh, Jack, yeah, they're cordless. 82 volt battery. battery is charged very quickly about half an hour and you can get 2 amp hour and 4 amp hour so that's about 160 or 320 watt hour respectively and the mower does a good job it really does 
Okay, so we've got our clear pads now. We've got to get some uh, donors. The defreeze, that's actually not a bad idea. Assuming it doesn't melt and decide to become one with the connector. That's always a, a fun way. I suppose you get some of that, uh, what was that, um, star gel or star, uh, I don't know. Some guy decided to make some very highly fl flame resistant material out of household materials or something. At least that was his claim. Okay. Alright, so we're going to pick all these pins and hopefully we can get this off. You can try post links, but if you're not a mod, you won't be able to. Oh, I hate chisel tips. Why am I using a chisel tip right now? Now, now, Crazy J, I didn't do it. It was sent to me like that. I'm just here to make things better in the world. <laughs> Death Palm, I thought you were already working. Okay, so now we've got the scenario. We have to go off the edge of the bench looking down into the abyss, the great blackness and go full crazy power hey Buzz Cola try not burn myself, I've already got enough flipping damage on my body today I might try to get the backlight connector off first Just realize I need more cool. This one's going to be harder because there's a, a lot more weight involved. Blimey heck, it really is hard. Mm. 
Um, I've got shorts on, not pants. Oh, right, you manufacturers your day job, sorry. Hmm, I didn't hear back from Yindi Yamara. I hope you're okay out there, Yindi. Oh, it looks nice. Now, the fun thing is actually going to be putting it back down on the board because you saw how much heat was required just to get it to come off so obviously I can't really do that to the same degree on a working board or else I'll end up with a not so working board most likely Low melt solder, well I mean I'm obviously going to put it down with um, leaded solder so that's about as low melt as I can go and still be electrically and structurally safe. I don't really want to go to any exotic compound versions. Not half of least which because I don't have any on hand. Damn it, bleeding through my glove. At least that connector's good. Silver solder, hmm. Oh, silver solder needs more heat than leaded, doesn't it? I suppose it depends on your percentage. But I'm pretty sure silver solder in general does need a little bit more heat. Uh, zero cool 278 yeah that's as long as you don't knock the board then yes the surface tension keeps all those parts on I used to do that all the time when I do two-sided reflows where I would have to populate one side reflow it flip it over populate the next side reflow it again One hundred degree stuff. What is the what is the alloy that gives you a hundred degree? Seriously, that's crazy low. Would not be ideal for Australian climates. Leave it in the car and it'll fall apart. I mean, obviously you can reflow these connectors at a fairly high temperature, but the problem is that the hot air creates uh, localised hot spots, and that's why they melt. Whereas when they go through a reflow oven, it's an ambient temperature. Or they use an infrared, which I don't have. But usually they're, they're fine, as long as you don't blow on them with hot air. But that's unfortunately exactly what we have to do. So we'll try, just tack it down with some solder and reflow it and hope for the best. Why is it not sitting perfectly flat? Who dare raises, what have we got? We've got more flipping, yeah, that's super glue. I had to sacrifice the connector so that I wouldn't destroy the cable because the cable goes to the keyboard uh, it's a backlight 
sort of like layer, the black plastic layer that you see on the underside of these MacBook keyboards. And I was in no mood to replace that. Yeah, it looks like we've got the remains off. The gallium will go that low if you load it up that, but it'll also ruin the living daylights out of everything else. It's like, yay, I low melted We're using gallium. It's like, yep, you're ruined. Use mercury. <laughs> uh, mercury is all good and fine until you decide to create yourself some methyl mercury. And God help you if you make methyl mercury too, then you will be dead. Very dead. You wave soldering. I gotta admit, uh, it's quite an art to get wave soldering to work well so f full um what am i trying to say full kudos to people who set up the wave soldering machines that's a hell of a job to get it right and then it probably changes the next day air decides to be a little bit warmer that next day and it's like well we gotta change it again then again maybe they've got it automated these days Hey Nathan Hopkin, now nah, just a little bit of uh, guivering, yeah, I suppose. Now, Pianov, if they can, you get it in uh, 15 thou size because honestly, if you can, I've got no problem paying. Yeah, okay, this, that's going to be my tack world. I've got no problem paying extra for solder that makes life easier and does a better job. I know, I know. Shonky looking solder for the moment. It'll get better. 0.46. That's like monstrosity large. Actually, this is about point... I think this is 0.38 or something like that. So really, I'm just being... Oh, for God's sake, why won't you... S Sometimes this tip really annoys me. Well, it's like I'm going to need some assistive heat. Or better yet, let's use some paste. Uh, if it doesn't make my life easier, then maybe not, but it looks sort of a secondary. I won't say completely secondary, I mean, we all look at lead free solder joins and we like it, ew. So, yeah, it looks do play a part. It's kind of like people say, you know, uh, about true love and all that sort of stuff, but you got to be attracted too. Yeah, uh, bevel tip for the win in this case. I was kind of hoping I can get away with it, but... It would appear not. I do have a new holder coming maybe next week. Looking forward to that. Okay, I got a new noise coming in somewhere. Don't 
like it when I get new noises. This is just 250 heat. It shouldn't upset the plastic at all. Unless I get really close. No, I'm just using it to warm the board up. Crap. Okay, it looks like I can get away with that. Alright, we got away with that. Just. And we do still have the tiniest amount left up the top that we can secure those front pins down with. Now we've got too much at the bottom. Not my best night for soldering, I'm afraid, folks. Uh, who am I kidding? I just... That's an excuse. I'd do better than that, Paul. <sighs> yeah, Keith, there's nothing much I can do about it, I'm afraid. It's YouTube, it's not me. My upload is perfectly fine, but unfortunately everybody's watching everything around the world because we're all in lockdown. Hey, Mark Cozzoli, Cozzoli is it? You're welcome. With Lewis you learn how to be a New Yorker. With me you learn how not to solder. Def Palm, I don't know if I want to... Yeah. I don't know if you can do 1080 on anything. I mean, as it is, I'm already below what 1080 normally wants. Three eight. Try that. And now chances are we're not going to be able to properly clear away the solder on here. We can just simply debulk it, like remove the excess. But because there is no mask between those pins, they will not fully separate. But we should be able to get at least a reasonable amount out. So we've got a nice little bit of a filleting going on. And that should about do it. I don't think the buffering is going to get any better before it get uh, before it gets worse. I can tell you that much. I mean, we don't even have the United States getting on full stream yet. Uh, those top pins, they're locked in, thankfully. You can just see the fillets on the front. Uh, so that's nice. 
So we used a bit of um, solder paste, just you know, dribbled a little bit around, and then we hit it with the. Ah, there's a solder ball escaping into the innards there. Shit, now it's. Oops, sorry. Damn it, swore. <sighs> there goes the algorithm. I'll never be the good boy next door anymore. Okay, it's, we've got to go blindly, and there we go, we've got our ball out. But yeah, a little bit of solder paste, heat up the board, and then hit it with the iron tip, and it does a nice flow in on those blind sort of pads. Alright. Ah, oh, Carbon, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, okay, so now we've got the tricky one. Buzz Cola, it's not my software. What are you, a Lewis stooge? How dare you! Audio sync is off, it just gets better. Probably because I changed everything. Okay, hang on. Let's try that. Yeah, it is like, I'd definitely say it's YouTube. Very unlikely that it's me. Because I do have a statistics indicator here and it's showing me no problems getting the data up there. 100% uh, perfect. Right, so this is going to be the harder one, mostly because we really want to get that solder to go underneath, but because of the heavy, uh, the high level of copper, like we've got this great big copper plane here, and then of course all of this here, it makes it very difficult for enough heat to build up so that the solder wicks the full length of the pins. But there's no other real way we can do it other than just to, well, basically hope and pray. If it was in a reflow oven, that wouldn't be a problem. Because if it was being done properly, then the board would be coming up to temperature. So we just have to do our best. Hey John Finn, how's it? Well John, I mean Pedro's down in um, New South, yeah he's down south and he doesn't seem to be having too much grief. Okay, the easiest ones are the, probably the middle three for me to grab here, and at least once I've got those in, then I can work on the outers. Eric, I got your message. You did message me earlier, didn't you, Eric, on email or something? And, um, yeah, I don't actually have any ideas, but Pownov would. Pownov is actually the right guy for that sort of question that you had. Me on the other hand, definitely not. Hell, Pernov wouldn't trust me anywhere near one of those chips. Hey, the lamp. Ah, oh, well, you know, winter here isn't really winter. It's just this fake thing they call winter, but really it's just summer with a little less screaming and burning and crying. A little less hell. Ah oh man, okay, this ground plane's going to be fun. I'm just going to put some solder on there, but obviously it's not wicked on. We're going to have to use the assistive heat method to get these on. 
Just blob them up good and proper. See, the thing is, the middle three, they're just data lines. Whereas the outer three on either side, oops, they're actual power pins. So, uh, get some solder on them, flux it up, give some assistive heat, and hopefully we'll have a win. I don't give that much assistive heat, it's, like I said, it's only, it's only 250 centigrade, and... 66 air but it just helps stopping the copper plane sucking the life out of the tip of heat there you can see it's and I'm going to hold that on there for a while and hopefully I should see another stage of wicking coming out ok, didn't do too bad you probably can't see it but I can see when it makes a jump periodically meaning it's sort of travelled a little bit further up the pad. It's an effect you sort of more see on when you're doing pin through parts and you've got a heavy um, physical retaining pin and as it works its way through to the other side, up the veer and stuff like that, you can see the solder will, the solder ball up the top will jump Anyway, this is working well enough for now. Uh, they just took a jump then. And I just slipped then, that was not deliberate. There we go, just took another jump. So that's not too bad a job. I think that'll do the trick. There's a, it could be a little bit more secure. Now, I could also put some super glue under there. But um, I kind of wish there was something a little bit better. Maybe just thick super glue. Because you, know, you can get your super hot or super fast super glue and then you get your slightly thicker grades um, the reason yeah, if, uh, the reason why it's called hot glue or super hot glue is because when it originally came out the original formulation it was runnier than water in many ways and by god if that stuff if you happen to be wearing jeans and you spill a bottle of that on your jeans the um, chemical reaction between the jeans and the curing would be enough to set things alight and of course burn your skin underneath yeah it was great fun back in the 80s very thankful to have the modern day improvements that we have a blob from a glue pen either side yeah JV World's actually a good idea too yes and it does have that viscosity that it would get under there a little bit but not too much so that's a good idea too the other way is I suppose just normal two part epoxy but I'm happy with that that's um, I'd consider that a tolerable soldering job that's a little bit excessive on the left hand pins there but I think we will live with that yep that's good I'm going to stick this in now and see if it charges Hey Teresa, yeah, cyanocrite burns through cotton and things like that is not fun. Uh, I can't be near the stuff too much anymore. It's what you do when you, well that's what happens when you abuse a chemical like that for too many years. <laughs> Uh, fumes will pretty much give me uh, influenza symptoms within an hour or so of being exposed to it. I do still keep a bottle occasionally around here, but it's just like double in a double container, and I've got to be very careful with it one drop at a time and then have the extractor hood on. Uh, we need a battery and a MagSafe and all that sort of jazz. 
Let's see. Clean, make safe. Oh, where's my chipmunk? Uh, Jim Hook, I'm pushing you really hard, aren't you? How are you feeling anyway, Jim? I mean, I was very happy to see that. Well, I shouldn't say it was only influenza, but um, given the current pandemic situation, I was happy to hear that. Thank you for letting me know, by the way. I was worried. Just getting the replacement battery that they sent me. Okay, the original battery is completely... Well, I wouldn't say completely dead, but it's certainly getting close to dead. It's got that very telltale, ripply look about it. It's a bit hard to show up on the camera, but yeah, it's it's kind of like oatmeal underneath. It's got that like ripple. <sighs> Call it lithium cirrhosis. That's what I imagine liver cirrhosis is like. I'm probably wrong about that. I don't want to ever find out. I can't find my chipmunk. Where is my chipmunk? Sorry, crotch cam. Or not. <laughs> uh, we don't have a chipmunk for some reason. I don't know what I've done with it. I'm a little worried about this pack. This pack feels like it's a... It's not the right pack. I have a feeling it will not be identified correctly. It does not identify appropriately as a battery. Okay. Ah, Jim. It's still, it's not nice, is it? Alright, so this is the 3437. We want spin up, spin down, spin up, spin down, spin up. So we've gotten first stage okay. Second stage, good. Alright, so that's good. So we're drawing 395. We want to get up a fair bit more than that. It could take a couple of minutes though. Let's have a look and see what our voltages are. We're at 8, 6. Seven three seven oh eight. It's not really pumping anything into the battery yet. We'll have to give it a minute or two. Andrew Hughes, welding galvanized steel I've heard is actually quite deadly. Or is that uh, chrome? Something to do with chrome. I remember um, there's an issue with the reaction or when you weld it and it creates some gas that is quite deadly. Well, we're going to give this a few minutes, see if it picks up, but I have a feeling this pack might not be the correct pack for this. So what have we got here? It's a it says it's a 1405 type. I don't think that is the right type. Pretty sure these battery the A1466 batteries are a different number. Yeah, these are 14 a 1496 is what they want, not a 1405. I think 1405 is for the 2012 version. Could be wrong. Pen off. He'll know. Uh, no, you're a crappy battery too. Okay. Maybe they are all the same family because I've got another battery here. And it's got 1377, 1405, 1496. So maybe they can actually be interchanged. We're still sitting at 
under 500 milliamp though, so that's a bit of a concern. Yeah, Carvon, that's... So I'm curious to see whether this will charge it or not. Uh, I'm just trying to find a battery that I know works and then I can just plug it in and test. You, are you willing to be a victim today? No, you don't want to be a victim, all right. Fine, selfish little thing. Sad when my own batteries don't want to come out. Oh, found you, you're hiding. Sneaky little so-and-so. 14... No, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. Jack, that's um that's a pretty funny analogy, a uh, pretty funny statement. More buff than Arnold Schwarzenegger. I I like that one. Uh so this is yeah, an older one. One of mine. It's got my name on the back. Gotta make sure of that. So here we go. Where's my freaking mag safe light? Ah. Right. No, you can see this one's charging. So this person may have ended up in an unfortunate situation where the original battery is a bit dodgy. They d tried to replace it. The battery that they replaced it with was a bit dodgy. And in the process of doing that, they end up breaking the board. And they still are going to have to get another battery. So, so this, at least we know the electronics are working. So that's what matters on this scenario. So we've got to win on this one. Excellent. Always good to have the known good battery. Known good parts save you a lot of drama. Guess who? Crap. This is going to need an ultrasonic, but unfortunately I forgot to turn the ultrasonic on today. People wondering when I was going to get my mower or my whippersnipper. Oops. And this is the old connector, well and truly mongrelized. <laughs> So 29, 2011 machine can handle other batteries from other size machines. The top of various batteries, there's machines. Ah. Up here, a lot of garbage batteries everywhere. That's pretty normal. I am very happy that the supplier that I use does seem to always end up giving me good batteries. Hopefully, I will not offend them in any way because I want to continue to use their services. No good back, zero. Oh, well, what's happened, zero? You got fused discs or nerve damage or I don't know. So it seems like as the years go on, we all get a collection of ailments that uh, become our every waking moment friend, and sometimes keeps us awake at night. It's always fun. You're trying to get some sleep, and you get that pain. So, hey buddy, we didn't spend enough time together today. How about you wake up? Yeah, yeah. By the way, I've got a new friend here. New pain that you haven't felt before. Yeah, and now you can stress about wondering what the heck that is. Is it something new? Is it something should I be worried about? Will it go away? Huh? You awake now, buddy? Come on, let's have a party. Yeah. 
Goddamn pains. Random stuff. And the way that life works, it seems the ones that you f finally get you to go down to the doctor to get checked out usually aren't the ones that cause problems. But then the times that you decide, no, nah, I'm going to push through this one, is usually the one you shouldn't have pushed through on. So, the universe's favourite game. Okay, the reason why I take these stickers off is because when I put them through the ultrasonic, I don't like them getting tainted too much. So I like to yeah, just leave them off and put them back on after I've done the ultrasonicing. Perforated disc in the lower back, the inside squeezing out to the spinal cord and sciatic... Oh, hell. Oh, hell no, not the sciatic nerve. I'm very sorry to hear that. I've got enough dramas with the sciatic nerve as it is. I would hate to be in the scenario that you're in with the perforated thing. Yuck. No, not nice pain. Yeah, the lamb, childbirth... Oh, not childbirth. <laughs> That, that causes a lot of pain too. Uh, old age. <laughs> Looks like something else other than... It's Wex Rex's fault. He wrote childbirth under your statement and of course my brain went along and picked it up instead. Blimey hell. It was still, that was funny for me. Maybe not for you guys, but for me it was. A bad back and knees at 22. Oh, rough. Yeah. Yeah. Chronic issues is it's fine if you can work your way around managing them. I think where it really starts to get to you is if it becomes something that you can't find a way of managing, you know, through a lifestyle change or treatments or whatever. That's that's when it truly really would suck a lot. So um for those of you who are enduring that, my sympathies. Unfortunately, sympathies don't do squat for making your life better. It's kind of like well wishes and prayers. That'll save the world. No, it won't. Or at least I don't believe it will. Ah, the cynic raises his head again. <laughs> Alright, so that board's got to go in for the wash. They'll go in tomorrow. Along with a whole bunch of other 1466 boards. What the hell? I've got a whole way too many up here. I still haven't sorted out my identification systems for when I put multiple boards into the ultrasonic but yeah I'll get there one day most likely the day after I accidentally mix up two boards that's how it's going to work alright so that machine's done and I found my chipmunk after the fact of needing it let's have a look at another machine Let's see if we've got some crazy puke or dog pee or vomit encrusted machine in my pile. Slipped disc 15 years ago and got numbness in the lower leg for the last of six weeks. That would have sent you a bit mental, surely. Wondering whether you're ever going to get your sensation back or not. Stuff that, no. Uh, zero cool, yeah, I mean, I've got pretty much the normal number of jobs coming up. They've turned up. I've had a few oddities. I've got a lot of people dropping in their laptops that they want fixed up, just Windows IT stuff. Uh, I gotta admit, I'm finding it, finding it hard to find time to do those. Half the problem is that I'm spending a lot of time working on my software and fixing up Linux kernel problems and then finding out that it's actually CUPS problems. Uh, what have we got? Uh, an A128 motherboard report. I think they mean A1278. What is it? No Wi-Fi. Mm, okay, that's a candidate. That's a candidate. I'm just unpacking these. 
I have to be careful. I do have a very bad habit of getting excited about things, unpacking stuff, and then not labeling it. And then I get a little less excited afterwards when I go, I've lost the laptop, the person's going to kill me. Yeah, that, that's not so exciting. Water damage, 1398. Yeah, that's less of a candidate. And that's it. Oh, that sucks. I've only got two in there. How lame. Man, I think we a heap. Fine. 1278 it is. I'd sooner do a 1278 than a... Okay. I may live to regret those words. How about doing a GPU reboot? Oh, sounds like a marvellous idea, chap. I'll get right onto that. Ah, you mongrel. You put a sticker on the bottom of it. Why would you do that? Now I have to show everybody who you are. No. You're a redundant sticker. You don't need to be on there. Right. Unfortunately, this person can abuse me if they want. I'm just going to laugh at them. Okay, with these, of course, we've got to change back to a primitive Phillips head driver because, well, that's what holds these screws in. I was kind of proud of myself. I remembered that before I started trying to unscrew it with a pentalobe. I should give myself a gold star. Maybe I'll have some ice cream tonight. Yes, I do have ice cream, finally. Uh, good old ice cream. Probably puts pressure on my kidneys and, yeah. But at the same time, probably lowers my blood pressure a little. And I need to do that a lot. Running around 160 over 100 is not good for your health. Okay, if it was truly ancient, it would be using flathead. Honestly, I don't know how flathead is so popular. Oh, right, this is a very old board. Was it Wi-Fi issues? Oh, hell, man. Wi-Fi issues. Isn't the Wi-Fi in here? Let's see. No Wi-Fi. Okay. I thought the Wi-Fi was in here. Or was that in the slightly more recent 1278s? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I remember being very an annoying to... Okay, no, not on these ones. There's no Wi-Fi on that. The other 1278, yes, there's Wi-Fi in there. But it seems not on this. Alright. Something new and exciting. So where is the Wi-Fi? Guess I better disconnect the battery. In the plastic frame near the coax. You see, normally, yeah, I mean, you got your three coaxes down there. There's nothing going into this one. Am I losing my mind? I think I'm losing my mind. Paul starts looking for something he doesn't know what he's doing with. The hinge cover? Oh, 
I'll get this battery up. You need to take the screen off? Oh, hell no. Well, I'm not taking the screen cover off. I do not believe I have another full screen assembly for this. Upgraded a 1466 128 with a 256 which I speed. Now I notice it's heating a bit during read write ops. Hmm. Uh, don't know. Yeah, that one's got me. <sighs> All right, well, I'm going to go have a look at this link that Carlbon just sent me, if it ever pops up. Ah, there we go. Oh, seriously, I put it in there. What a pain in the... yeah. <sighs> Is there any chance that it's actually just got power issues or something? 17, 18. Yep. Baka. Sorry. Let's have a look anywhere around on the board just in case we spot something that says hi the card is fine but the board is effed yeah I'll be happy if I see that what is this capped on covered crap I mean seems to be a bit of fluxing going on around there Maybe someone's been uh, someone's been digging around here. Let's gonna have a look around the board first, okay? Twenty-eight seventy-nine. We have probably wouldn't hurt. These boards are notorious at this age to have. A lot of surface corrosion that finally has gotten through. Wow, this really has gone through a fair bit of... You know, someone's been working their charms on it. Letting the old passion fingers go wild. Okay, they, they've been considerate to it. They haven't really actually done a lot of damage. We've seen badly damaged runs before. This one's being respectfully handled I'm just lashing out so my apologies hey stubby No, I can't see any... Well, I'll take the board out anyway. Looks like the board is already jammed against a cable, crushing a cable, so that's a good start. Um, for these, we want T6. Wow. It's been that long since I've touched a T6. That oh, where is my T6? My kingdom for a T6. You and you're covered in flux. That's not a pretty T6.
also looks like the heat exchange pipe has been bent. I never like seeing that happen. Um, buzz caller, I mean that's possible, but if it's the antenna, it should at least show the Wi-Fi as a device, and then you just simply you won't get a very good signal. But it should still show the device. And the crushing is more over here, which is, you know, the microphone and whatnot. And you ready to be free? You want to break free? About to break free. Holy shit! This board, yeah. <sighs> it's not a good look. It's really not a good look. Hey, Steve K. Hey, Jose. All right, right down the bottom here where the typical sort of corrosion occurs on these typical sort of, where's the, where's the microphone? What did you do to the microphone? Someone lost the microphone. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah, huh? Uh huh. Yep, corrosion. Yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. This is the dentist looking at my teeth tomorrow. Uh huh. Yep, mm hmm. They're going to be like, yeah, we, we need to put this one down. He's too far gone. And that's not even the bottom edge. Here we go. This is a board that you basically do not fix. You replace this board. There's almost no point trying to go through and fixing up all of this. Hell no. No. You replace this board. That chip looks disturbingly new. Hmm. Now, now, look at the... I know it doesn't what? I know it doesn't look too severe, but you'll find most of these yeah, there's gonna be internal damage on a lot of them. It's just not worth it. You can put it through the ultrasonic and it will make it look pretty. But all this sort of corrosion has been sitting around long enough that some of it will wick into the actual parts. All these resistors here, they're going to just start dropping dead, so no, this is a replacement job, not a repair, sorry to say. It's just the way it goes. I mean, obviously someone's been trying to repair it, and so they're not going to be happy that their work has gone to waste, but um, I'm not going to follow them down that rabbit hole. No, thank you. Use a pseudonym, send it to Lewis. Hey, it's a good idea. If this was a 2936 or a 3115, I'd have a replacement on hand, but I don't have one of these ones, so uh, the person's going to have to dig around and find a replacement, but yeah. They may say, but only the Wi Fi is broken. It's like, yeah, maybe right now, maybe that can get fixed, but chances are, two weeks later, that's another problem is going to pop up and then another problem is going to pop up and then another problem is going to pop up and once my name is on that repair bill I'm going to be blamed for everything it's like I don't want to do that sorry <laughs> just some jobs you just have to know to walk away send to Anel that's a good idea he'll kill the CPU and it'll be, it'll be over and done with Okay, so 1398, liquid damage. Oh, God, this is probably going to be almost as bad. The person that sends me these, they have a 
a bit of a reputation of sending me the stuff that I basically unpack, look at, say no thanks, pack it back together <laughs> and send it back to them. They're trying to be good, you know, they're, they're trying to give me jobs. They're, um, you know, a perfectly nice person. But, unfortunately, a lot of these jobs that end up here are just time wasters. And I, I guess maybe perhaps what he's doing is he's sending them up to me to get final confirmation, as it were. Sort of like, if I don't want to do it, then maybe it is time to tell the customer we need to bury this one. We need to bury this one in a way that Stephen King cannot resurrect it. Okay, so this is liquid damage apparently. It's liquid damage, but it doesn't say what's actually wrong with it. That's half the problem. It's like, okay, you're liquid damage, but what? Why? What symptoms are you showing? The yeah, RPN of I'm thinking so as well. Okay, Liam, well look, you take care. Thank you for dropping in. And this is a flux of liquid all around here. I'm not liking it. And if it's flux, I'm not liking it. If it's liquid, I'm kind of not liking it either. It's like, uh, take my pick. What do I want to like? Ah, uh, no, there's liquid, yeah. Hey, Christian. Yep. Yeah, the yeah. So we've got down here. I've worked on this area before. I've forgotten what it's for, but I have worked on liquid damage in there. So we're gonna have to take this off. I th guess the first thing to do is: do we have actually any life at all on this? So the chipmunk is going to tell us. Today I let the magic smoke out of two four hundred volt fets, and I have no idea how it stink. Oh, gross! Yeah. Were they FETs or were they um, IGBTs? You don't normally see two 400 volt FETs. Check resistance to ground on PP bus G3 heart now. Panov has been the voice of reason. This is why sometimes I wonder whether I should just ban Panov from here because he has a bad habit of reminding me of my failings. Uh, nobody likes that. Okay, we've got a. 426 board. Now I've on 426. Just bringing up flex board view. I don't think I've got a 426 board, so I hope I can find something else. Oh, I do have a 426, but it's a 163. You'll have to be close enough. Alright. I just wanted to confirm that where I was about to stab it was the right place to stab it. <sighs> that looks suspiciously like a dead CPU. 0.3 ohms. What do you say, Pernov? Do we blame this one on an L? Yeah, 0.3 ohms, that is not a good start. 0 0.3, 0 0.3, that's a dead one. Could it be a cap? That's the question. Could it be a cap? Uh, let's see, PP bus G3 heart. Let's have a look. Pianov directed me like he's ratatouille or something. That's the fun thing when you're on a live stream. You actually do tend to forget a lot of this, the normal steps you would take because you're too busy 
you know, interacting back and forth. And uh, you have to get used to the fact that you become an idiot when you do live streaming. If you can't live with that, if you can't live with the fact that everybody's going to look at you and go, why would I send anything to you, you're utterly incompetent, um, then don't do streaming because uh, it can be a little harsh on the heart, the soul, the ego, all that sort of stuff, yeah. Okay, always forget these damn tiny little, why the heck they went with these particular style of fuses, I'm not sure. Point four four three nine. Hmm. Okay, so we've got the same on PP bus G three hot. I think that actually gives us maybe a chance. Maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Let's pay on off think. No, I'm just saying that you know, when you, you when your brain goes into like multiple processes and you're dealing with people and things like that, it is very difficult to maintain. It's very difficult to run through the normal process that you would. It takes, I would say, a lot of practice, and I think a good example would be, say, Lewis Rossman. He has had plenty of practice. And yeah, he can remember to do most things while he's also abusing me and my software, even though we've done nothing to him but save him time and money. <sighs> yeah, Pernov, I noticed there was, um, there was liquid there, but it also seemed to be flux. So um, I do agree with you. But I greatly appreciate that um, you got me to check that, so thank you. Mind you, don't get me wrong, with sometimes when I'm streaming and I am actually doing something that I know that I know quite well and I'm not getting confused and things like that, and people make stupid suggestions, then I will tend to yell at people and get angry. <laughs> Hey, Rescue, yeah. Uh, I'm really not going to look at taking those FDMs off. No. That's not a... It's not a pretty process. I don't know if they have been replaced. It's hard to say. Oh, no. I think that's our... Yeah, that's our problem there, I think. So we had... Corrosion shorting out a bit there. We've got some extra hot bits there. Okay, Jose, thank you for dropping in. Appreciate that. You stay safe too. And yeah. I say we close this back up and send it right back on its merry way. Oh, look at that. They even left the cable under there. That was nice of him. Save me having to unclip it. Very thoughtful. So, yeah, that's two for two going back to the shop. I'm going to have to start charging more for this. And then I'll send the money to Pernov because it was actually him. It is a bit tricky, John. But, I mean, I don't find it too intimidating. I know some people can. But I'd say the hardest thing is, like I said, just the case of you get a little bit um, mind blanked occasionally. And you can start to think, oh God, oh God, I'm going to look like a complete idiot. But then you have to remember, you are on YouTube. There are people on there who are going for the conspiracy theories all over the place. And all you're doing is just forgetting what sequence you're supposed to be testing things on. So you're not too much of an idiot. You're just a little bit of an idiot. Besides, it's good to remain a little bit human. Zero cool. Thank you very much for the two quid. 
I'm glad you could make it. Hopefully, you'll be able to make future ones too. Hey, Dave Legault. Blame the 5G, yep. <laughs> I did have someone asking me the other day when they came and picked up their stuff. They said, what do you think of the 5G situation? And I tried not to be... I tried not to be prejudiced against... You know, react badly against that. I mean, people are genuinely asking, so that's fair enough. And some of the... Um, some of the things you see out there are almost mildly convincing. And I said, look, lads, so we had the same problem when microwave ovens came out. We had the same problem when mobile phones came out. We had the same problem when 2G, then 3G, then 4G, now 5G has come out. We had the same problem when the internet came out. and yeah, So it's, it's the same pattern over and over again. I can't guarantee, you know, I can't allay your fears completely because obviously you have them. I said, but from my point of view, no, there's no issues. I mean, there are some issues with 5G, but that's technical stuff, not am I going to get infected with COVID-19 over it, stuff like that. Battery can stay connected. It was connected when it came in. It can stay connected. All right, lid on. You're the wrong lid. Damn. Well, I'm glad we at least got that one machine up and running that was at least a bit of technical sort of video as opposed to a diagnostics video you know we didn't really have anything that was specifically faulty on the other one we just had a broken piece of um connector so it was a bit of a change going for the technical type video techniques perhaps okay let's get the screws back in here Make sure this uh, zombie laptop doesn't escape from its prison. No, I'm just trying to find the two short screws. Did you only give me one short screw and then you used a long one in the... Yeah, I think that did. No, wait, there it is. Yes, if, you, if you've only been doing MacBooks for a little bit, the two screws on the back of the A1502s and 1398s, these two here, they're fractionally shorter than the rest of the screws. I think you can long screw into these, but yeah, they are actually slightly shorter. What's this big Clive? Well, Polly, what's going on? Your, your messages are getting retracted. Same fears when electricity first came out. Well, don't forget, remember... Remember when we were young and cars were starting to become a thing? Well, actually, it wasn't even cars. It was steam locomotives. And they said, if you travel more than 23 kilometers an hour, it's not possible. It's impossible to go faster than 23 kilometers an hour Otherwise, you will hit a solid wall and you will die instantly. Mm. That's legit. They really thought that if you go faster than 23 k's an hour, for whatever reason, I don't know, maybe they thought the ether would, would get too thick at that point and you would not be able to pass beyond 23. We now know that is actually 300,000 kilometers per second. But, uh, so they're a little bit off on that one. Uh, your lungs would burst. Was it that it? 88 was the um, 1980s limit, yeah. <laughs> and you had to have a man with a flag in front of you. Oh, that was for the cars, yeah. yeah. Uh, 30 miles per hour. I could have sworn it was 23 miles per hour. Now I'm going to have to dig around and see if we can find out what that truly was. 
Uh, let's see. Fears that you, if you went faster than 23 miles per hour, you would hit a solid wall of ether. Fast and light speed, fast and light speed, damn it. I hate it when you have a little factoid in your head and you have no idea where you picked it up from. I'd say it's probably the 5G towers. The other thing that people forget is that every nanosecond of your life, you are being bombarded by very high energy particles from outer space. So, uh, that's life. You're constantly being shot at. If you mention Big Clive, it gets deleted. Oh, right. Yeah, when Google doesn't know, you have to wonder whether it's real. Um, did people think that you couldn't couldn't go faster than 23 miles per hour? Mm. Everything's still speed of light, speed of light, speed of light. Yeah. Oh well. Maybe one day I'll find it. Neutrinos, all sorts of things. But yes, predominantly neutrinos. Yes. Neutrinos that have spent eons traveling from the neutron star to reach your body and do nothing with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That reminds me of a interesting thing. Hey, Mark Bianca. Thank you very much. Actually, we'll have an ice cream tonight. And, oh, before I forget, um, I've forgotten already. Damn. Uh, the person who sent the 10 kilo of um, Whiskers biscuits, thank you very much. That arrived yesterday. And now we have got it in our stash. And we um, yeah, got to keep it away from the kitties because the kitties smell the biscuit packets and they go along and uh, break into them. And we found that out the hard way for the first couple of months of our of their lives, you know, when they got bigger. They had this really bad habit of finding where we put biscuit packets and they would just rip them open, stuff themselves silly. So we have to now keep them in either in a locked room or airtight containers. It's the only way. I think that came from the fist steam train. Yeah, first steam train, I guess you mean, yeah. Hey, Stubby. Rescue, right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, anyway, so they arrived. Thank you very much for that. Um, very much appreciated. Always is. 10.54pm your time. It is indeed 10.54. Mm-hmm. DeAndre Dria, 96. Well, welcome. Thank you for turning up. Welcome to your first time. Unfortunately, I'm almost out of things to do because... Yeah, I don't think I've got much. I've got a bunch of assemblies to do. I think I need to not do any repairs tomorrow. Just reassemble things that need to be... Um, all 16 of my holding shelves are full. I need to um, clear that out. I need to clear this whole room out. I've already taken two carloads of cardboard boxes down to the dump and I still have way too much stuff in here. It's like I need to have a shed that is maybe 20 by 20 meters and 5 meters high with a mezzanine floor and then perhaps a basement as well where I can keep customers that I don't like. Things like that. Um, big investment. Maybe I should do a YouTube series on that. Creating the perfect tech shed complete with dungeon basement for bad customers. Sounds like a good idea to me. Uh, yep, alright, okay, yep, time for me to go, I'm going to go upstairs, I am going to now go and fight with my Dymo label printer and try and find out why the heck it keeps just auto-rotating, no matter which way I want to make, if I change the rotation of the label to portrait, it will then go and landscape it, if I set it back to landscape, it will go and portrait it, it's driving me insane. I have even written my own page definitions in the PPD files. I don't know what's going on. I'm missing something very simple somewhere and I haven't found it yet in spite of around about 150-200 labels being printed so 
Yeah, it's driving me mad. Uh, I really thought all that was behind me when I fixed up the cups driver, but um, I guess uh, no rest for the wicked, I suppose. Three rounds with the dynamo. <laughs> yeah. All right. You all take care. Thank you very much. Um, if any of you do know how to fix up the uh, cups auto rotation on the dynamo printers, please let me know before I go insane. Otherwise, I'll have to go insane and find it myself. So I'll see you all later. You'll take care. Catch you later.